Good morning and welcome to everyone taking part in this week's public witness and to those who will view this at a later time. I am Monique Gauthier, sister of St. Joseph of Orange and a companion of the family of Joseph. The family of Joseph gathers people who respond to the movement of the spirit and resonate with the charism of unity and reconciliation as expressed by the sisters of St. Joseph of Orange. We are companions who live and work to expand God's inclusive love in the world. This week's public witness is being offered by the family of Joseph, and it is with great joy and gratitude we are sharing these moments of prayer, witness, and reflection with all of you. Our focus today is a response to how our faith guides all of us to act for justice and compassion in support of our immigrant brothers and sisters. And now, I'd like to invite Julie Moucher, who will introduce today's participants. Good morning, and once again, thank you, um, everyone, for participating today. So please allow me to introduce everyone. Um, all of today's participants, our companions in the family of Joseph. Sister Monique, who welcomed you all today, is also a family of Joseph Corps team participant. Sister Linda Fallhaber, a sister of St. Joseph of Orange, and the family of Joseph Corps team participant will guide us through a brief examen. Doreen Chesebro, also a core team participant, will offer today's opening prayer. Juan Laguna Esquire, an attorney whose practice is fo so focuses solely on immigration law, who has extensive experience assisting immigrants become naturalized citizens of this country, will provide witness to his own story as an immigrant. Eduardo Moreno, and Fernanda Velasco will lead us in today's Praying the Litany. Eduardo is the manager of Healthy Communities at Mission Hospital, Providence St. Joseph Health. And Fernanda Velasco is a former St. Joseph worker with the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange who has just graduated this past Sunday with her master's degree in health management yeah, from Mount St. Mary University. Congratulations, Fernanda. I'll be guiding the silent reflection following one sharing and I'm also a family of Joseph Core team participant. As we begin today, I invite you to take just a moment and consider the words of the prophet Amos. Let justice roll down like waters. And really consider the image, the image of the woman running with her children toward the promise of a new life as we wrestle with how our faith guides us to act justly and with compassion. United with the divine advocate and one another, we pray for the grace of openness, courage, and compassion as we ask. How am I open to see you 
in the eyes of my immigrant brothers and sisters. How do I respond to the pain of children separated from parents? How do I bear witness to those who live in the shadows and whose lives are filled with fear and stress? How do I advocate for my immigrant brothers and sisters seeking citizenship? How do I help my immigrant brothers and sisters receive the basic living necessities? Food, water, shelter, medical care. In what ways am I willing to learn, listen, and act to be in solidarity with my immigrant brothers and sisters? Source of justice who is known by many names. Open our <clears throat> eyes that we may see the immigrant and undocumented. Not as threats but as brothers and sisters whose dignity is tied to our own dignity and whose lack of freedom calls into question our own freedom. The farm worker, the hotel maid, the line cook, the child care provider, the gardener, waste management workers, the student, the healthcare worker, the teacher, the lawyer, and so many others. Source of direction who is known by many names. In our daily living, let us be guided by the worth and dignity of every person regardless of their legal status. And let us not forget Creation is a gift of for everyone. We have the moral responsibility to bring forth justice and mercy into these times. May it be so. Uh, thank you everyone for having me uh, to share my experience and also for watching uh, this uh, testimony today. Um, as it was told before, my name is Juan Laguna. I came from Spain back in 1990. I was born in a small town, old town in the south of Spain called Cadiz, C-A-D-I-Z. And when I was six, my family uh, went north to Madrid, to the capital. And I grew up in a middle class neighborhood uh, over there. I managed to, to become an attorney in Madrid at a time in which, you know, the law school wasn't that expensive. I had a, a, a job at the time, so I was able to go to school and study. And uh, I met my wife back in 1987. Uh, my wife is from Orange County. She went to, her name is Jane. She went to Mother Day to St. John the Baptist in Costa Mesa, a uh, very devout Catholic of, of this area. She was uh, a good uh, 
friend with the sisters in Joseph too. She had nuns in school. And um, we met and we dated uh, three years in Spain and we discussed marriage and we decided to, to move to Santa Ana back in 1990. And since then, I haven't left Santa Ana. I have only lived in one neighborhood of Santa Ana and uh, no other places. And the moment I came, I didn't know what I was going to find in terms of jobs or in terms of activity. And uh, my first job was Catholic Charities. They were looking for an immigration consultant. I found the, the or counselor, better said counselor, immigration counselor. I found the job offer on a bu uh, parish bulletin in St. Hans, heading Jerome Main in Santa Ana. So I applied and I was uh, hired. And I was there for a few months only. But I learned immigration. And from then, uh, I tried to, you know, uh, do business with Spain because I wanted to go back and see my family. Uh, but I never, never left the immigration law field in different, different capacities. Finally, in 2001, I passed the California bar and I started my own business uh, doing immigration. But in Catholic Charities, I, I was coming already as a trained lawyer so I had the ability to relate to people. I, 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 you know, I did consultations. So it was my, uh, a good, good virtue or good quality that I had. And here is my first client uh, that I was given by, by my supervising attorney. Manuel is a person from Mexico. And he was a permanent resident and he wanted to become a, a US citizen. And without words, I was listening to him, uh, there was a voice without words, it's a silent situation, but I felt this message coming from Manuel. He was telling me, Juan, I want to be a citizen. I don't care if you're gonna, hire, if you're gonna charge me a lot of money. I don't care if you're going to make mistakes. I don't care if it's gonna take a long time. But I care about the way you treat me. I am a person and I want to be treated as such. This happened in the beginning of 1991. Since then, I have been listening to that voice throughout these almost 30 years doing this work. And it is uh, the key to receive the gift of the relationship with uh, immigrant blue collar workers from Mexico, um, El Salvador, Guatemala, the main three countries that I, uh, I uh, encountered in my practice. The gifts continue. Uh, I know I am aware that I, for whatever reason, I had those gifts to share too, gifts that I was given uh, without me knowing it, obviously. But the first one is just the gift of being open, open to share with the person that I encounter every time. That person uh, could be uh, this immigrant who came to the U.S. looking for a better life, or it could be an immigration officer. It could be uh, doing an interview, the immigration officer, or uh, at ICE, when my clients are in ICE custody. Could be a lawyer working for immigration for ICE in court, or an immigration judge. Being open to share um, listening and uh, hospitality uh, allowed the uh, flow of uh, or the sharing of the gifts that we have been given. 
through the years, I have seen, like in the prayers that Doreen presided before and Sister Lina, uh, suffering. Suffering, and uh, at the same time, um, joy. Joy when people find a place where they are uh, welcome, where they are safe, where they are guided, and uh, in return for that uh, atmosphere or that uh, welcoming or that professional relationship, uh, the person who listens, the person who makes the environment hospitable, the person who does the, the work for, for, for uh, the other person receives uh, something that is hard to describe. It is, uh, I think, the Pope, in a homily that he gave on July 8th, 2020, commemorating the seventh anniversary of uh, Lampedusa, you know, in Italy, when there was an immigrant uh, full, I mean, a uh, ship that I mean, full of immigrants, uh, talks about that. I mean, it's a good homily to read. And it, it, it describes really well the encounter, the encounter that uh, it takes place, we share with, in particular, in this case, with immigrants. Yeah. So, uh, I know that we are all in a journey. We are all in, you know, seeking maturity, knowing what, uh, you know, finding ourselves. And I know at certain time of my life, I didn't even know uh, what was going to happen. And now that I am of age, you know, after 30 years of practicing here or living here, let us say, I can tell you that I am convinced that I was born to do this work. I was born to, uh, to share with people uh, my gifts and to receive the, the uh, amazing, amazing uh, contribution. I don't know what, what to use, but uh, you know, the, it gives me joy uh, you know, to, to share with immigrant workers who are resilient, who are who have good sense of humor, who are uh, willing to to you know to uh, fulfill their commitments, whose dream is just to be able to submit uh, an authorization card to get a job at a hotel or at a restaurant to cook, you know, and they are very happy to follow the law and to be uh, finally uh, legally, legally here. So they don't need to be uh, worried about being taken away by ICE, especially in these times in which, you know, there's just uh, crazy, the prayers uh, that were uh, said at the beginning of this uh, presentation Explained really well, you know, the advocates. We need to, we need the prayers. We need the prayers because this is just uh, very difficult. Uh, I always distinguish between the law, we need to follow it, and justice. You know, common sense and justice they are here, and immigration law is here, especially since 1997 when the law uh, drastically changed. Um, interestingly, uh, I know there was a, a Republican Congress. Um, there was a, uh, Bill Clinton was the president and he signed the immigration law. And that uh, law has brought a lot of uh, suffering. But in any event, we shouldn't finish this uh, in that note, in that note, okay? The idea is, I am very thankful to be able to share 
with the immigrant community in Orange County. And uh, I uh, thank everybody who was in, involved in this uh, opportunity for me to share. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Some reflection questions following the sharing. As you listen to Juan, how is your heart and spirit being stirred to action? How is God inviting you to respond to our immigrant brothers and sisters? Guided by our faith and the sacredness of all creation, we affirm the dignity of all people and our call to live, to love our dear neighbor, made in the image and likeness of God, we pray. For immigrant families suffering in the shadows from poverty and brokenness, may God bless and protect them as well as we all work for the reforms to the immigration laws, we pray. God of mercy and compassion, hear us. For all those who are overwhelmed by exhaustion, loneliness, poverty, and despair, that they may be comforted, we pray. God of mercy and compassion, hear us. For those who, who labor in the shadows of this country for unjust wages and security, that we may bring dignity to their work through reform of immigration and labor laws, we pray. God of mercy and compassion, hear us. We pray for the release of immigrants from detention camps who are in danger of dying because of the spread of COVID-19 restore their rights to seek asylum, and that they may be reunited with their loved ones. We pray. God of mercy and compassion, hear us. We pray to transform the hearts and minds of all people to uproot the sin of exclusion, racism, and xenophobia. In our nation, we pray. God of mercy and compassion, hear us. For those who work and minister tirelessly for justice and advocate for the rights of immigrants, we pray. God of mercy and compassion, hear us. For our community gathered today, that we may help to strengthen unity and reconciliation among all people and nurture understanding and celebration of diversity through the world, we pray. God of mercy and compassion, hear us. You may have been inspired and moved to action by all you have heard and seen today. 
you might ask yourself, but what can I do? Here are some suggestions. Now is the time to act. I commit to learn more about the immigration laws and current policies impacting and oppressing my immigrant brothers and sisters. Raise your voice to advocate with our U.S. Senators to protect people seeking asylum protection and to protect the U.S. asylum process. Please call and or email each of your U.S. Senators and ask them to protect the world's most vulnerable individuals, asylees and refugees, fleeing for safety. Protect the U.S. asylum process and refugee resettlement program. Support, co-sponsor, and pass pro-asylum legislation, including the Refugee Protection Act and the Asylum Seeker Protection Act. Information on how to contact Senator Mitch McConnell is listed here. And we also like to offer you some resources for community prayer be in your faith uh, community as well as families and different settings when gathering with people. Prayers for migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers from the Ignatian Solidarity Network, Social Justice Resource Center uh, Immigration Prayers, and also uh, prayers for immigrants from the Interfaith Worker Justice organization. May these resources be a help to many of you. So um, thank you all for joining us today. And a special thank you to all who contributed to today's public witness. Uh, just a reminder, the next um, prayer date is August 27th, and the theme is Peace and Reconciliation. Until we meet again, take care. Thank you.